Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. My name is Megan Mitchell, and I am the founder of Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep, here today to bring you another Social Work Shorts. This was requested by popular demand, and today I'm going to be talking about the types of prevention, the different models, what they look like, what some examples of the different models are, and then also we're going to wrap up with one practice question related to prevention at the end. So the first thing you'll need to know is what prevention is and what this model looks like. So in social work, we use prevention models. Um, This would be probably one of those more macro questions because when we're talking about prevention, we're talking about strategies and models to be able to serve and help and prevent things from happening in large groups of people. So what prevention is, is it's a model Um, to give education, to give services, to stop the spread of a disease or a behavior um, from spreading. So in recent years, social workers have actually moved towards this prevention model rather than reaction. So we want to prevent something from happening before you know, it gets to a point where then we are just reacting and trying to damage control. So prevention is really, really helpful. And it can be used to reduce a lot of variety of things. Why it's used in social work is because, like I said, we're trying to target a large amount of people. We're trying to stop the spread or the development of disease, death, suffering. And prevention works really important because it can protect and be really, really helpful among our most vulnerable citizens. So whether that be age-wise, whether it be socioeconomic-wise, health-wise, prevention work is important and it matters. So the definition of prevention is taking steps or actions to minimize and eliminate social, psychological, or other conditions that can cause or contribute to physical and emotional illness and sometimes socioeconomic problems. That's a lot of words. What does that mean? What prevention, the whole purpose of prevention is minimizing risk. Minimizing risk for a variety of different illnesses, minimizing risks for a variety of different behaviors. Um, so that these physical, emotional, and socioeconomic problems don't grow into big, big, big problems. So prevention works. And we're going to talk about why it works, what some examples of prevention work are. And the first stage in prevention is primary prevention. I really like this visual because it shows that prevention occurs on a continuum. You start down here with the biggest block because at the bottom, primary prevention, it's going to target and help the most amount of people. We've put primary prevention work and um, strategies into place. Not every, It's not going to catch everyone. So then as we move up, our triangle here, we move into secondary prevention. So this is that maybe some people have developed symptomology or maybe they're at higher risk of developing an illness. Um, We want to target that and get it under control at this secondary phase so that we don't have to move up the triangle to tertiary prevention. So when we're in tertiary prevention, it's going to be more individualized because a smaller amount of people are affected at this tertiary stage. So I like this triangle. And as you can see, the arrow moves up because remember, things happen on a continuum. We might catch people here. We might catch people here. And then when we're in the tertiary prevention stage, um, we really are focusing on quality of life, um, comfort, and We really want people to be able to have good, good, good quality care, and we want to make their lives comfortable. Maybe the disease has progressed, and here we'll we'll talk about what some of those tertiary um, strategy models are as well. So I really like this visual if you're a visual person. Remember, primary here, we're trying to target the entire population or a huge portion of a population. Here's where we're trying to educate and support before something occurs. So primary prevention, you're going to get the most bang for your buck because you're trying to stop things from happening um, and on a large scale. So then we move up to secondary. 
here. They might have some symptomology. They, like I said, they might already have some risk factors. We're trying to alleviate those problems, minimize those problems, and we're trying to stop it from escalating, right? So we're, we're trying to contain here. And then as we move up to our last tertiary, those this is where we're providing that individualized um, treatment and trying to focus on quality of life. So remember, prevention occurs on a continuum. Okay, let's start with primary prevention. And remember, primary prevention was that big block that was at the bottom of the triangle on that continuum. Primary prevention. The purpose of primary prevention is to protect people from developing a disease, experiencing an injury, or engaging in a high-risk behavior in the first place. So in the 90s, big, big, big push for people to wear seatbelts because research has proven that wearing seatbelts um, will lower the risk for injuries and in auto accidents and even death. So that was an example of primary prevention. You might have seen commercials and stuff on billboards and in magazines. The purpose was to educate a large number of people in the general population so that they would not engage in the behavior of not wearing a seatbelt, right? Here, we want to educate and inform as many people as possible so that they're not engaging in risky or high risk behaviors. Big thing with COVID too, mask wearing is a big example of primary prevention. We're trying to stop the spread of the disease. So a lot of places you have to wear masks, right? That, that's a primary prevention strategy. Other examples of primary prevention include um, immunizations, right? So if you're vaccinated against a disease, that's going to prevent or stop or slow the spread of that disease. Like I said here, education about seatbelts, that was a big one. Screenings for the general public to identify risk factors. So screenings are really good because we can catch people that might be at higher risk. Um, we can catch them so that we can educate them and help it once again from spreading further. Um, promoting exercise and good nutrition, right? We know that if people have good diet and good exercise, they are at, going to be in a better place to not develop some of those other health conditions like high blood pressure, um, obesity. Counseling about the dangers of tobacco and other drugs, right? There's tons of programs that are out there. A lot go into schools to educate people about, you know, what, what the side effects could be, how this could affect your health. Health. The purpose of this is to stop people from engaging in this behavior um, so that you don't have to deal with the consequences later down the continuum. And then like we said, mask wearing, right? We are trying to prevent the spread of a disease. Just a little note here, because in primary prevention, we're, we're hoping to stop or avoid the behavior or the illness from even occurring, it's considered the most cost effective, right? This is why social work agencies do prevention programs because when you can target people on this larger scale, you're going to not have to pay for some of these things down the line. Big thing with early intervention, right? If we can help young children when they're in infancy and toddlerhood and we can get them the services they need, we know that's very cost effective because later on in their life, they're not going to maybe need some of those services. So prevention works. It's a really good model. And I think that's why a lot of times it's being talked about in social work now. Okay, second type of prevention, moving up to that second rung in our triangle is secondary prevention. So why we would need secondary prevention, it's because it's this occurs after a disease, injury, or illness has occurred. So maybe, let's be saying with COVID, someone has COVID. So now in secondary prevention, what we're trying to do is we are trying to stop the slow of the progression of this disease, and we're trying to limit that person or this population from having long-term effects, right? That's why they tell people to quarantine so you're not outspreading the disease even more. Secondary prevention, we might want to stop a re-injury from occurring. So, um, you know, putting things in place that would make that possible. We want to prevent this from worsening. We don't want symptoms to get worse. We don't want the behavior to get worse. So secondary prevention is when person already has new or mild symptoms and at this stage, right? 
Remember, as the triangle went up, fewer people are going to need secondary prevention because we already caught them in a, uh, we caught a great amount of people in that primary prevention phase. So secondary prevention symptoms or behaviors have already occurred and we're trying to stop the spread from worsening, right? Biggest thing with this prevention, we're trying to stop the spread. So in secondary prevention, biggest thing here is slowing and trying to limit the long-term impacts. Examples here, telling people with heart conditions to take daily low-dose aspirin. So here, the disease is already present. They have a heart condition. Doctors often tell them to take a low-dose aspirin to prevent or limit long-term effects. Next one, more frequent checkups or doctor visits for patients with chronic diseases. So they already have the chronic disease, right? We are trying to limit the long-term effects and limit it from progressing. So we know if people are checking in with their doctor and having more frequent doctor visits, that can slow or limit the, the, the disease from spreading or worsening in some cases. Um, lastly, modifying work assignments for injured workers. So if someone comes in, they're already injured, right? So that would put them in that secondary prevention phase. But we want to modify their work for them so they don't get re-injured, right? If someone has, a, a, you know, say, a broken leg, we're going to make accommodations for them. We're going to allow them to take the elevator. We're not going to want them to be on their feet on this broken leg so that their injury could get worse. So that's secondary prevention. Then the last type of prevention, remember this was the very tip of that triangle. This is when the disease or the behavior has progressed. And here it's all about manage it. You want to manage this disease. You want to focus on quality of life. Um, so you're managing those long-term illnesses, those long-term symptoms, those long-term injuries. Here, the goal of tertiary prevention is you don't want deterioration to go um, to progress. So we're trying to stop deterioration and you want to maximize, maximize quality of life because we know, right, the disease is here. Our other models of prevention, primary and secondary, did not work. So here, we want to preserve quality of life and comfort. So here at tertiary, like I talked about before, it's usually a bit more individualized, right? So with primary, remember, it was targeted at the general population. Secondary, there's it's a um, you know there's still some things we can do, um, but at the tertiary level, it's definitely more individualized because people are going to have complex needs that we need to address. Um, so some examples of tertiary prevention would be pain management groups. So going to groups so people can learn to deal with their pain they're having from chronic disease um, to, to improve quality of life. Rehab programs, right? So this might be people that are have to attend rehab for years at a time, right? Because they're trying to maximize quality of life and prevent that further deterioration. Hospice or palliative care. This also can be a form of tertiary prevention, right? Because we know that usually in hospice and palliative care, um, we might be nearing the end of life or we're trying to make that person comfortable. We're trying to make them comfortable. We don't want people to be in pain. Um, also, dialysis is a form of tertiary prevention because the purpose of dialysis is to improve the functioning of those kidneys so it does not worsen. So these are some examples of tertiary prevention. Remember, the hope is that in, in a prevention model, primary prevention would have caught a lot of people. Few would need secondary. In tertiary, you're going to have the fewest amount of people needing this. Um, and that's why you do get more of that individualized approach. Okay, let's end with a practice question. Which of the following most accurately describes prevention in social work? A, actions taken to minimize and eliminate social, psychological, and other problematic conditions. B, the act of directly representing or defending vulnerable populations from disease or negative behaviors. C, educating populations and clients about the cause and effects of an illness or problem. Or D, actions taken by social workers and communities to give information about the availability of preventative services in their area.
go ahead and read, take a moment to read through these answer choices. Okay, always want to figure out what is this question asking. This is a most question. So this means that given the choices that we have, which one is the best and all encompassing that's going to explain what prevention work is in social work? Well, let's start eliminating ones we know that are not going to be the most accurate description. Okay, we can eliminate C, educating populations and clients about the cause and effects of an illness or problem. That is a part of prevention, mostly in primary, but that does not best accurately describe prevention. So we can take out C. C is just not all encompassing enough. C is out. Another one that we can take out is D, actions taken by social workers to give information about the availability of preventative services. Once again, not all encompassing enough. Not enough there to accurately describe prevention, which leads us to A or B. So go ahead, read A and B. The next one we're gonna eliminate is B, the act of directly representing or defending vulnerable populations from disease or negative behaviors. A lot of times in prevention work, there's, you know, as you're moving up the triangle, there's different ways that we can defend vulnerable populations other than just directly representing them. That's not an accurate description. Um, there's a lot of words in there that are used as distractors. So B would be out, which leads us to our answer choice A, actions taken to minimize and eliminate social, psychological, and other problematic conditions. Remember, prevention work, the whole purpose is to minimize and hopefully eliminate these problems, right? That's how prevention works. It's all about minimizing and containing. A, actions taken to minimize and eliminate social, psychological, and other problematic conditions is the most accurate description of prevention in social work. This was a tough one. This was definitely a tough one. 